are the MHSAA, a collection of 750 high schools and 750 middle schools, from Temperance to Copper Harbor, from New Buffalo to Alpena. Each year, more than a quarter of a million students play one of our 28 sports. More than one and a half million fans attend our postseason games. There are 30,000 coaches and 8,000 officials, not to mention all of the volunteers. The MHSAA believes in the four S's. School sports should be safe and kept in the appropriate scope. We believe nothing beats great sportsmanship and that scholarship in the classroom is more important than excellence on the field or court. Most of all, we believe school sports should be fun. So come out and join us at a game. Support your school, support your community, and come see what the excitement is all about. Weights have been lifted. Sprints have been run. Preparation for today's game is history. It's time to get it done. You're listening on michigansportsradio.com. A thrilling end to the hockey season in Plymouth, and more honors for one of the state's most decorated athletes. I'm John Ross, and this is This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid. What a weekend at USA Hockey Arena in Plymouth as three schools captured MHSAA championships on the ice. Let's start with Division II. Byron Center avenged losses in the finals in 2021 and 2023 by knocking off Trenton 6-1 in the championship tilt. Senior forward Jackson Froisland netted a hat trick for the Bulldogs, who also defeated Saginaw Heritage in the semifinals. In Division Three, Bloomfield Hills, Cranbrook Kingswood, and East Grand Rapids were knotted at two in the third overtime period. Let's hand it off to the NFHS Network's Joe Jason for the call. Albers take the draw for East Grand Rapids, Michael Horton for Cranbrook. Horton draws it on back. Rister. Goal! There's the winner! David Schmidt with his second, and Cranbrook for the 19th time in 21 tries wins the Division Three championship. Heartbreak again for East Grand Rapids. This time in the third overtime, the goal coming at 426 of the triple overtime. David Schmidt's overtime winner gives the Cranes a 3-2 win and their 19th hockey title. In Division I, for the third year in a row, it was Detroit Catholic Central in Brighton. And for the third straight time, DCC is victorious. The Shamrocks win a fifth straight D1 title and 18th overall by winning 2-0. For more on all the action from the ice, please check out MHSAA.com. It's time for Game Balls, when we highlight a trio of standout performances from the past week. First, Farmington United's Leah Hodge. The senior gymnast placed first overall at the Division I Gymnastics Finals, and she helped Farmington to a second-place team finish. Rockford's Haley Hill, she was first in Division II at the Gymnastic Finals and helped Rockford Sparta win a gymnastics team championship. And to Zealand junior Owen Stevens, he defended his D1 swim titles in both the 200 individual medley and 500 freestyle. For high school seniors, the matchup of the year isn't on the court. It's actually online. That's right. When you fill out the FAFSA, you know, the free application for federal student aid, you could also be eligible for thousands of dollars in additional money from the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. Now that's a matchup we can all root for. Get started today at michigan.gov slash achievement. The Michigan Achievement Scholarship. It's a game changer. Our weekly Be the Referee feature takes a look at the fine art of officiating 
with registered official Paige Winnie. When watching a college or NBA game, the last two minutes of the game can seem like it takes forever, especially in recent years where more and more judgment calls made by officials are subject to instant replay. At the high school level, video is not used to make a ruling or confirm or overturn a call made during the course of the contest. The only time video review is used in basketball at the high school level is at the MHSAA semifinal and final games. In these games, video review can be used only to determine if a shot was released in time at the end of the fourth quarter or overtime, or if that shot was a two-point or three-point field goal attempt. The MHSAA believes that this very limited use of replay in these games at the very end of the tournament series in boys and girls basketball is the right call. Thanks, Paige. Now more than ever, we need officials. If you're interested, please go to the MHSAA website now to register. Tyrone Wheatley graduated from Dearborn Heights Robichaud in 1991 after a stellar career in track and field, football, and basketball. And now, Wheatley will be inducted into the National High School Hall of Fame by the National Federation of State High School Associations. Wheatley will be the 10th inductee from Michigan. After high school, he went on to star at the University of Michigan and in the NFL and is now the head football coach at Wayne State University. But it was on the track that Wheatley performed like no other. As a junior, he took first in four events, the first to do that and still one of only two to do it. He collected 40 of his team's 49 points that day, leading Robichaud to a Class B title. He followed that up as a senior winning three events. Only an injury kept him from trying for a fourth. Wheatley will be inducted in July at the National Federation's summer meeting in Boston. You've been listening to This Week in High School Sports, powered by Michigan Student Aid, a production of the MHSAA Network. Thanks for joining us. I'm John Ross, and we'll be back next week. Bulldogs looking to inbound against the pressure. Lobbed the head over the timeline to Gable. Gable straight to the basket. Elevates. Jams it down over top of Orbaugh. Oh, my goodness. That tomahawk jam over top of the defender. Up fake, leaning right elbow. Skips the right corner to Watson. Kept to shoot three. Splash. But Steven has taken the lead. 47-46. Justin Watson, another triple. He has nine. 138 in the third. And a big red lead. One, giving on to Titus. Titus, angles, pull up shot for the lead, good! Brady Titus, a scream to the heavens after he knocks it down. And it's the ultimate revenge for Tri Unity. Another state championship for Coach Keeler's squad. The defenders of Tri Unity Christian, state champions in Division 4, 56 45, the final. And hello everyone, and welcome to game night, and welcome to the Breslin Center. My name is Nate Dreyer, and of course, so excited to be back with everyone, and, and unexpectedly excited to be back with everyone. We'll address it at the start. I don't think I want to address it again afterwards, but uh, as many of you know, of course, through social media, my life, my family's life absolutely rocked this week with a, uh, a devastating fire that destroyed uh, pretty much everything uh, we owned, uh, a complete and total loss. And we're certainly working through everything now and, and, uh, and back towards, towards building back. Um, but uh, we certainly thank everyone. And, and first off, I'll, I'll thank everyone uh, from uh, our game night supporters and listeners for, uh, for all of, uh, of their support uh, this, uh, this past week. It's been absolutely huge for us. So uh, I'll acknowledge it at the beginning. I don't think I want to. I'm going to be able to acknowledge it too much afterwards. But we thank everyone so much for it. And we're, we're, we're so, so glad that we're back on the air. Uh, unfortunately, CT, with this kind of late schedule change this week, to be able to be here, uh, unable to join me. Uh, but uh, we are here, and we are here in Division Two with uh, one of the games of the day. I think on, on the girls' draw here from the Breslin Center, it is the D2 State Semifinal. And it's a couple of teams with just one loss between them. Uh, Grand Rapids West Catholic, Coach Vander Endy's team back here for the third straight year. They've got only one loss on the year. That loss coming to Rockford, who just fell in an overtime thriller a little bit earlier on today in Division I. And then Father Gabriel Richard out of Ann Arbor for head coach Tim Kane. An unbeaten 27-0 and perfect in the Catholic High School League this year. Uh, these are two teams. The winner will have Detroit Edison, who pulled away from Nagani in the game before us here. Uh, that certainly have got state championship uh, on the mind or a state championship on the mind, and they certainly each are uh, going to provide a great one for us here today. We're going to be able to get in a lot of things here in our Centennial Securities pregame show. 
I think chief of, Mitch, chief of which we're going to be able to look at kind of the defensive systems. Each of these teams, both teams that play a lot of full court defense, they lean on their defense. They did so in their last wins as well, especially West Catholic winning 35-27 against a really good Vicksburg team in the state quarterfinal to punch their ticket back to the Breslin Center. So we'll look at that, look at some of the key pieces, a lot of youth for Gabriel Richard and uh, that young Irish team. And then, of course, a West Catholic team that now a lot of experience that's been here for two, three uh, straight years at the Breslin Center. All right, we'll take a quick break here on our Centennial Securities pregame show. When we come back, uh, we'll start to get into things just a little bit more. We are Centennial Securities. An independent firm with a team of committed professionals. Who strive to exceed our clients' expectations by giving outstanding service. We're proud to be part of our community where we live and work. You can feel confident choosing farmers, which means a black cat doesn't always spell bad news. What about a gang of them? Actually, a group of cats is called a clowder. Isn't that right, tough guy? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. And the end is the drive. I am Chandler T. Oh, he. wow. <laughs> We're going to leave this in. All right. This is staying in the show. <laughs> He is Chandler Timmer. I am Nate Dreyer. This is what happens when you work together for six years. The yeah. names are one. We're just one, yeah. Chandler Timmer, Nate Dreyer. Chandler Timmer, Nate Dreyer. Yeah. Michigan game night, tailgate report. We clearly have to stop talking. I do at least. I will see you all. He'll I see you too. <laughs> Friday night, Granville, Wyoming. I think 6.30 we're on the air for that. Goodbye. You like cartoons? This has our logo on the front, on the back. The Bulldogs, the biggest games, the best teams. That's our tagline because we do all of that even though it makes some people mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see that after Tuck has came and went that... Why are you laughing? <laughs> I don't know. That things are, <laughs> that things are, still, uh, things are still on track there. God. <laughs> Jenison. Uh, things that stand out. Davison is going to kick everyone's <laughs> Leap that. Um, All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Scott Bates Farmers Insurance Agency pregame show. And he has returned. He's still on the beach. We've been bugging him about it all week long, but Chandler Timmer joins me here on the Bates Agency pregame show. CT, you seem to be doing better than the rest of us. Yeah, I know. It's pretty nice down here. It's I can't blame you one bit. All right, nice. let's talk a little bit more about Forest Hill Central because when you... <laughs> Waylon Haney just hit a half-court buzzer beater to win the game <laughs> at the buzzer, the JV game. Granville wins 55-52 rather than just always relying on one player. Yeah, Scott Bates' agency pregame show continues here uh, on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. CT, I think the next thing that you have to mention uh, most notably in this contest is break me every time still. <laughs> every single time that happens, it gets me. The winners still go to the Heartland student section last year at, at the Breslin Center. Those guys win every time. Season, and we'll wrap up our broadcast with... The Heinz orthodontic smile of the game grown uh, at that point guard position. Tough backcourt in general, getting to some of those other pieces that we have out there. After three years, it finally almost came down on me. Good catch. I don't know who what kid got that, but that was a good catch. Uh, but regardless, a tough back. Do you have any comments on the trolls? Uh, no, I mean, I'm with you. You're friends with the trolls? <laughs> you are trolls? Well, I, I have... <laughs> Uh, troll tendencies potentially when it comes to <laughs> egging you on, I guess. But <laughs> your flight's at five, or your uh, yeah, the flight out of uh, Panama City is like at five, and we don't get home till like midnight. So that sucks. So you're actually that was a lie. You're not going to be tuning in. Yeah, no. I, if I'm at the airport at that time, I will be. But I'm likely missing most of it. Okay. Thank you. 
We are Centennial Securities. An independent firm with a team of committed professionals. Who strive to exceed our clients' expectations by giving outstanding service. We're proud to be part of our community where we live and work. Uninterrupted listening on all your favorite tunes. Click here to start your seven day free trial. If it's important, it's not worth compromising. Which is why with farmers, you don't have to compromise quality to get great savings on your insurance. I got this. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. All right, welcome back to the Resident Center. Everyone, Nate Dreyer with you here on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. Second game of the day here on MSR after that uh, thriller uh, in overtime in the Division One semi between West Bloomfield and Rockford, a game that I think many were kind of hoping is, uh, was potentially going to be the, the, the impromptu state championship game and has certainly lived up to all the hype uh, in that one with Brock Conkle and company on the call for MSR. All right, Father Gabriel Richard out of Ann Arbor, and then, of course, West Catholic out of Grand Rapids, as I mentioned in the open, just one combined loss between these two teams all season long. That one loss, West Catholic against D1 Rockford. So uh, that's the level of team you have with each of these teams, and in particular, their own end of the floor is where both of these coaching staffs certainly like to turbocharge things. For Coach Kane and for uh, FGR, a base 2-2-1 trap typically, but full court creating steals, creating turnovers, or at least slowing down the opponent, getting them out of the rhythm, and they've done that to an incredible uh, efficiency all year long, giving up 33.5 points per game on the year. And, of course, of course, Coach Vander and his team, if you've seen the West Catholic system that has taken them to three straight trips to the Breslin Center this year's team, uh, very, very similar. They started Tuesday against Vicksburg on a 12-0 run. We're only tied at 14.5, really had to lean on the defense, gave up just 27 in the end against Vicksburg to win that game. But this West Catholic team has uh, just been absolutely outstanding. They have not allowed 40 points in 11 games now. They've gone double-digit games without even allowing 40 points. They've only allowed 40-plus points six times on the season, and they've only allowed 50 or more once. That was the 71 that Rockford scored against them. They gave up 35 or just under 35 a game in total. So this is a defense that's hit their stride down the stretch as well. They were champions undefeated in the OK Blue. Father Gabriel Richard was were champions undefeated within the Catholic League. So two teams whose seasons completely mirror each other in a lot of different ways, and it all comes to a head here at the Breslin Center. They, they like to do similar things. They're going to look to try to do similar things to each other. The question is which coach between two terrific coaches that are each you know five, uh, co five years for Coach Kane, ten years for Coach Vander, and the uh, very, very well tenured at their teams, what are they going to be able to come up with to find those advantages? And one of the X factors is going to be experience versus youth, and, and certainly these are a couple of teams that have got a ton of young talent and, and experience as well, but when you look at Father Gabriel Richard, it's a pair of sophomore twins in the backcourt, Ava and Vanessa Rodriguez, that certainly lead the way for them as their combo one and two guard and, and one two punch that they have. Vanessa went for 17 points in the regional final, Ava went for 11 in that same game a couple of games back, they beat Tecumseh last time out by the way, so... You know, th this is a, a backcourt that is young with a pair of sophomores, but a pair of sophomores is twins that play very well together and certainly uh, have, have been able to, to do a little bit of everything on the floor. For West Catholic, there's a lot of experience when you look at, at their backcourts and their leaders. <coughs> Excuse me, on the whole, of course, Reese Pelega has been here to the Breslin Center now for several straight years, and she certainly will be the one uh, that's going to lead the way. I mean, it's her third year, her third trip to the, to the Breslin Center, uh, an IP uh, FW Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne commit uh, and, and really the all away the all around two way leader had 15 points against Vicksburg that was the team high for Polega leads the way with good size as well six foot in the backcourt can shoot the basketball can score inside as well and then of course defends at all levels in this full court trapping defense that West Catholic brings to the table so there's a lot of experience I mean you can add an Alicia Dykstra's been here a few times as well for West Catholic versus uh, an FGR team that's younger in terms of the pieces that are maybe seeing the Breslin center floor for the first time maybe even our underclassmen that we uh, are going to have our eye on we're going to motor on ahead here in the Centennial Securities pregame show don't go anywhere we'll step aside be right back here from the Breslin center 
Strategies was founded based on the belief that the interests of our clients must always come first. We listen and understand your objectives before making a recommendation. We customize the portfolio of investments to fit your goals. It is our commitment to provide a strong line of communication. Our services include family wealth management, saving for retirement, and estate planning and trust services. Getting started is as easy as picking up the phone. After all, when everything is said and done, isn't it about time? It's the final game, folks. This one wins the series. Struck out with the cheap seats? Important things aren't worth compromising. At Farmers, we offer both quality insurance and great savings. Here, take mine. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. House rips it out. Here we go. Miles Stefan to run the first attack here. And a couple of points on that possession. Doesn't get it. Physical game early. Slow down the game, gets slopped up, and it winds up being an all-time classic. I expect nothing short of that tonight again. Yeah, I think so. I think. Nev's corner, got one. And a timeout from Coach Vanderslice Gymnasium. Continue to carry his pregame show. Let's take a look. Nate, best thing to say about a really, really uh, fun contest. Bulldogs will get it out of the break right here with 53 seconds to go. Hey everyone, Nate from Michigan Game Night. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the end. Going by DeYoung and the Bulldogs. DeYoung for Regnaris free throw line. Turns the back, left wing, Wade, triple try, splash! What a couple of moments and possessions for the Bulldog freshman. Timeout from Coach Riddell. Unbelievable. Here for Reynolds, second free throw, the right hand overhead motion is good for Caden Neves. Really terrific game for him. He's now got 10 of Granville's 26 and a six point lead for the Bulldogs. Wing Sorokin, Sorokin bounding in the lane, left corner to Young, all alone, triple splash right down the hatch, absolutely pure for Jackson to Young, Granville by nine. It is good for Caden Neves, really terrific game for him. He's now got 10 of Granville's 26 and a six point lead for the Bulldogs. We'll go to highlights to start in the first half with the Neves dump and a couple more that we'll follow that up with. All alone, drives the basket, jams it, and one! He's fouled through the dunk! Caden Nevs finishing strong with the right hand, has a chance for one more. You can feel cotton. We are Centennial Securities. An independent firm with a team of committed professionals. Who strive to exceed our clients' expectations by giving outstanding service. We're proud to be part of our community where we live and work. You can feel confident choosing farmers, which means a black cat doesn't always spell bad news. What about a gang of them? Actually, a group of cats is called a clowder. Isn't that right, tough guy? We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. 
Welcome back, everyone. Game night on Michigan Sports Radio. Nate Dreyer with you here. Court sad from the Breslin Center. Again, that much close to the MHSA girls. D2 uh, semi here on March on MGN. Unbeaten father Gabriel Richard and the Irish out of Ann Arbor and the Falcons out of uh, Grand Rapids West Catholic uh, 26 and 1 on the season for Coach Vander and his team will make their third straight appearance here in the semis at the Breslin Center we talked a little bit about the defense that each of these teams bring to the table how about the offense because a lot of things that kind of mimic each other on the offensive end of the floor as well just like some of the full court defensive approach first off both these teams can really work the perimeter and shoot uh, the basketball very well for for uh, Father Gabriel this is a team that uh, can operate a three or four out offense and they really really like their guards and their ability to shoot both Vanessa and Ava Rodriguez of course but you add in Charlotte Miller the the junior wing who's got a really really dangerous uh, pull up ability as well working at the perimeter this is an offense that they've got some size inside but certainly looking to shoot the basketball uh, as, as a big part of what they're going to do and then West Catholic of course led by Reese Polega and, and her size and shooting at the perimeter able to stretch the defense out but then a lot of options Alicia Dykstra even as more of the the traditional kind of post player she's moved out to be more on the perimeter shoots the ball well as well there in the middle of, of everything is Alexis uh, Asakoma the the freshman phenom uh forward and, and center for coach Vander Andy the, the offense will rotate around her in the in the post but everyone else from Dykstra to Ignatowski off the bench the Rebecca and Emma Tuttle sisters as well they both certainly uh, provide a lot of shooting burst that's going to be very, very critical for what West Catholic wants to do if they are going to find their way back in the state championship game where just like two years ago they could have a chance to try to take down Detroit Edison for a state championship. One more quick break. We'll be right back here on the Centennial Securities pregame show when we come back. We've got the anthem and we've got basketball. D2 semifinal here from the Breslin Center. What would you do with some extra time? Shop Fast Lane today. Somebody once said life moves pretty fast, and that's exactly how we like it. Want to build something? Great. Start businesses, build bridges, raise a whole city. Future in fighting crime? Want to save lives? Do it all here. But you've got to go forward fast. Because today is now, and tomorrow is soon. And to get ahead of the game, you've got to get ahead of your time. This is your future, so take it and move all of us forward. Are you looking for a new career? Aetna Supply is hiring. Aetna Supply is Michigan's number one plumber wholesaler, servicing local customers for over 50 years. They offer great benefits, a 401k with company match, quarterly bonuses, and no Sundays. Once again, check them out at aetnasupply.com slash careers or click on their logo on the Michigan Sports Radio homepage. Have you recently collided with a deer or been caught in an unfortunate accident? Don't worry, Car Center Collision and Glass is your trusted partner to bring your vehicle back to life. With convenient branches in Cedar Springs, Burton Heights, Alpine and Big Rapids, we're right around the corner to provide expert assistance. From collision repairs to mechanical fixes, we're your one-stop solution for all your car needs. Check us out at carcentermi.com. All right, welcome back, everyone, to the Breslin Center. Centennial Securities pregame show here on MGN. That much, clo that much closer to the D2 semifinal here uh, in East Lansing. Let's take a look at some X factors for FGR and for West Catholic. These are two teams that don't really go overly deep. I, I think you traditionally look at the rotations. If they're, if even though they do press and they play at a pretty high tempo, if it. If they, excuse me, only go six or seven deep in total, I, I think that's where each of these coaches may want to be. Some X factors off the bench. Paige Seeley London, the junior guard for Coach Vander Andy and West Catholic, shoots the basketball incredibly well off the bench. And Anna Ignatowski, the, the junior guard, a longtime member of this team as well, terrific two way defensive player, both in the backcourt there. Cora Williams, the six foot junior on the other side for FGR, provides uh, the most size this team is going to have off the bench, plays some big minutes in the post off the bench. So certainly take a look uh, for Williams uh, there. So a couple the guards off the bench, X-Factors for West Catholic, and then a big coming off the bench for Coach Kane and uh, Father Gabriel that are going to lead the attack in that regard. Both teams are uh, wrapped up with their warm-ups, and they are ready to begin the national anthem right here in just a second. So we will get ready to send it on down courtside now for the national anthem here 
at the Breslin Center and the pregame festivities. After that, we'll take it back over and we'll get you the starting lineups and get you set for tip-off in this one from the Breslin. MHSAA Girls D2 State Semifinal on deck. All right, we are just about ready to go from the Breslin Center. Nate Dreyer back with you here courtside. It is March on MGN on game night on Michigan Sports Radio and could not be more excited to get this huge one in division underway. Now, starting lineups first, let's take a look at uh, the road team on scoreboard and in uniform this evening. Father Gabriel Richard the Irish out of Ann Arbor for head coach Tim Kane working his fifth season on the bench. They went unbeaten in the Catholic High School League and they went unbeaten on the season a perfect 27 and 0 this year and certainly were among the top teams start to finish so far in the state of Michigan and DT. We'll see if they're going to be able to get things finished off today over a very stout West Catholic team that all the same sentiments can be echoed for. And then tomorrow they will have the always uh, tough pioneers of Detroit Edison waiting for them in that one. Let's take a look now. Father Gabriel Richard in the backcourt. They'll have the sophomore guard, Vanessa Rodriguez. She had 17 points in the regional finals. Joined by her sister, Ava, in the backcourt. Both five foot five guards. On the wing is the five foot eight junior, Charlotte Miller. Up front for Coach Kane and the Irish is the 5'10 junior, Sage Edmondson. And in the middle, starting things is the 5'10 senior, Veronica Fredericks. West Catholic, 26-1 on the season, 14-0, and champions of the OK Blue Conference. For head coach Joe Vanderendy in her 10th season, the Falcons will be led in the backcourt. First by the 5'7 senior guard, Rebecca Tuttle, should be joined on the backside by the six foot senior guard, Reese Polega. On the wing is the 5'11 senior forward, Emma Tuttle. And up front for Coach Vander Eddy is the six foot junior, Alicia Dykstra. Joined up front by the freshman standout, the 5'10 freshman, Alexis As Asakoma, who uh, had seven points and nine rebounds for that freshman last time out against Vicksburg in a state quarterfinal win in that one. Breslin Center ready to go. The Falcons in the home whites. Numbers in green. Trimmed in green with green trimming down the side. And the Irish wearing their traveling blacks with numbers in white and Irish in script written across the chest on those uniforms. Final introductions and we are just about ready to go. Expect an, expect an up tempo game. Expect a defense led game. Both of these coaching staffs absolutely 
first and foremost and above all else, want to lean on defense both in the full and the half court to get things done. We'll see who's got the coaching advantage. We'll see who's got the skill advantage. Two teams that are loaded, two teams that have got state championship dreams in mind. Who gets to keep the season going? Take on Edison tomorrow night. It's the final game of the day at the Breslin. It's the final semifinal in boys or girls basketball of the season. The jump is Fredericks and Pelega. Give a couple of inches to the West Catholic guard on this one. The Falcons go left to right across the radio dial. The Irish go right to left. And we are ready. Ball's up, tipped back by Pelega. Falcons have the control, away we go. Rebecca Tuttle to the top of the key. Starts it up with a left-hand dribble. Can the defense switching around as the Irish will open up man-to-man -man defensively. Right wing, it's Dykstra. Off the jab to the free throw line. Skip pass, right block through the hands of Emma Tuttle. Back onto a driving Alicia Dykstra. Jump pass, up top, catch and shoot three, Rebecca. That one off the right side of the rim, no good. But a whistle off the ball is going to send it back the other way. And immediately, it'll be a full court havoc trap being set up by the Falcons. Right side, throwing ahead for Charlotte Miller. Throws it over the timeline to a leaning Fredericks. Fredericks throws up top, poked and stolen away by Rebecca Tuttle. Then it's stolen back away by a reaching Veronica Rodriguez. But a foul called on Rodriguez, and it will go back West Catholic's way. First foul of the ball game on either team. And now West Catholic will set things up. Check that. Foul actually going to get whistled on West Catholic there. So foul goes on the other side. A drive along the baseline off a spin. Vanessa Rodriguez, right hand shot off the window and good. A good move there by the sophomore. Gets the first points of the ball game. 7-17 to go in the first. Up top, Dykstra, the six-foot junior. Up fake, defended here. Arms spread wide by Charlotte Miller. Again, Irish go man-to-man -man in the half court defensively to open things up. Dykstra to the left wing. Throws up top to Asakoma. The freshman drives all the way to the basket. Right hand push shot, rolls out no board, ripped down by Miller, off and running. Throws over the timeline to a sprinting Ava Rodriguez. Rodriguez, some issues settling down the basketball, shuffles and travels. West Catholic takes over. Again, Gabriel Richard will set things up in a half court man to man defensive set right here. 6.50 and less to go, first quarter, 2 0, the FGR early lead here over West Catholic. Rebecca Tuttle, top of the key. Tries to go around a screen set by Pelega. Now gives it to Pelega right wing. Working the triple threat and the jab step. Skips it right wing to a curling Dykstra. Top of the key of the left-hand dribble. Watched out there defensively by Miller. Dykstra slowing it down, setting it up. Down the right side of the key. Flinging right-hand shot. Hangs on the back rim and falls. A good one for Dykstra. Puts West Catholic on the board for the first time. <coughs> All the way down the floor. Pushed on to a driving Veronica Fredericks. And Fredericks able to get free and score down low and put the Falcons back down and back with the basketball right here as the Irish retake the lead by two early. Six minutes to go in the first. Asakoma top of the key. Throws a right wing nearly out of the reach of Dykstra. Settles it down. Curls free throw line. Back to Asakoma mid-range. Turns the back right block. Up top through the hands of Rebecca Tuttle. Tuttle will set it back up and reset the offense with a call with a left-hand dribble. Right fist in the air. Now barks out another signal. Drives to the left wing. Stops. Looking to hand off to Pelega. Now got it to Asakoma. The freshman in the left wing. Holds the ball high. Feeds in front of the timeline to Dykstra who will reset the offense again. Inside, 5.40 to go in the first. Dykstra around a screen left wing. Behind the back dribble. Asakoma, right wing, tries a three, rolls it down good. The freshman steps outside, knocks it down, and the Falcons have their first lead of the state semifinal. They bring out a 1-2, one, 1-1, one, one. have it. Diamond into one press, poked and stolen away by Emma Tuttle. She'll settle it down, left block, try to feed left wing to Pelega. Poked away from Pelega, but last touches off the West Catholic senior, and it will go back the other way. Again, full court defensive pressure on here in the backcourt. Angling to the left side of the floor, Ava Rodriguez. Ava throwing to no one over the timeline, stolen away by Dykstra as it went straight to her, running into the basketball. Dykstra throws down left block, able to snag it, Emma Tuttle. Turns the back, whips left wing to Asakoma. Right wing on a Pelega. Thinks about the triple, now jabs around a defender free throw line, whip pass right corner to Rebecca Tuttle. Tuttle turns the back, throws right corner just to her left side on Asakoma. The freshman drives the baseline, whip pass, 
filters its way on through a reaching Rodriguez. Left corner to Tuttle. Set back up left wing for Dykstra to reset the offense. Four and a half to go first quarter. 5-4 West Catholic. Dykstra drives right side. Floater short off the right side of the glass. Board down to the Irish and Edmondson. Running back the other way is Charlotte Miller. Left wing catch and shoot three. Splash Vanessa Rodriguez. And the Irish go back on top. She's got all five of her team's offense. And that certainly was a good look there. Two-point lead for the Irish. Left wing, Pelega around a defender. Launches a pull-up triple off the back rim. No, rebound spike to the corner. Two aside, scrum after it. Last out off of Rebecca Tuttle. And it will stay Irish basketball. Cora Williams, a six-foot junior, comes in for the first time as Fredericks will take a seat. 4.07 to go, first quarter, 7-5. Check that. It will now get reversed down and be West Catholic basketball. Right corner, Pelega to throw in. 4 7 in the first. Pelega pounds the rock. Lobs it inside the free throw line. Taken there by Astacoma. Turns the back against a double team. Whips up top to Pelega. Stolen away by a reaching Vanessa Rodriguez. Rodriguez, Euro step into the lane. Left-hand shot blocked by Pelega. Poured down to Emma Tuttle. Given on to Dykstra to run the break over the timeline. Snakes into the paint, throws to the corner, away from a reaching Rebecca Tuttle who went chasing into the scorer's table, unable to save the basketball. Another turnover. It'll go back the other way. Coach Kane wants a quick timeout, and we will take one as well. 7-5, Father Gabriel leading West Catholic with 3.49 in the first. We'll be right back. It's a beautiful time of year, but for many, it is also the beginning of allergy season which means lots of sneezing, itchy watery eyes, runny nose, constant drainage, or ear pressure. These are all allergy symptoms we regularly treat. Don't let your allergy stop you from enjoying what you love to do outdoors. We have several ear, nose, throat, and allergy specialists ready to see you. Find us online at michigantentallergy.com. We look forward to helping you enjoy the outdoors again. Welcome back to the Breslin Center, everyone. D2 girls stay semifinal on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. Nate Dreyer with you here solo this evening. 349 in the first quarter. 7-5 to five is the Ann Arbor Father Gabriel Richard lead. And it will be full court pressure in the backcourt. Irish able to break it with Vanessa Rodriguez. They've done a good job breaking that press uh, on a couple of occasions. Skip pass down, looking for Williams. Reaching from behind. A foul going to get whistled on Pelega. That will be the second on West Catholic, the first on the senior who has uh, made her third trip here to the Breslin Center along with a lot of her teammates. Baseline left inbound for Williams. Got it left corner there to Edmondson. Looking to go back to Williams. Spiked along the end line. Out of bounds by a reaching Alicia Dykstra. Again, we'll stay baseline left for the traveling blacks and the Irish to take this one on over. Paige Seeley London comes in for Pelega. And she'll get her first action of the game for the, the junior sharpshooter off the bench. Short left corner, inbound Edmondson. Hands it off on the curl for a driving Miller. Into the paint, right-hand shot, rattles out. Board taken down by Emma Tuttle. It will be Seeley London to run the break with three and a half to go in the first. Two-point lead for the Irish. Right wing Dykstra crosses and curls to the top of the key to reset the offense here. Man-to-man -man defense in the half court for the Irish now will morph into a 1-2-2 zone. Right wing for Dykstra. Throwing up top. Passing lane red by Vanessa Rodriguez. Chased it into the backcourt. Poked the ball inbounds where it's taken back away by Seeley London. And Seeley London will control the offense over the half court line of the sprint. Throws top of the key to Dykstra to reset the offense. Three minutes to go first quarter. 7-5. Father Gabriel Richard. Dykstra taking her time. Dykstra getting a screen from Asakoma to the left wing. Behind the back dribble to the free throw line. Stops, works the pivot. Right wing, Asakoma. Here's the freshman. Knocked down a triple already. Defending her is Edmondson. Starts the right-hand dribble. Looking for Tuttle. Got it there right corner to Rebecca. Tuttle drives the baseline. Skips it for her sister. Left-hand push shot. Good off the window. We're tied again. The Tuttles connect, and Emma gets the finish. Full court pressure once again back on here. Left side, Miller skips it over the timeline to a crossing Vanessa Rodriguez. Rodriguez throws it all the way down low. Stolen by Tuttle. Poked away from Tuttle by Cora Williams. Will stay West Catholic basketball along their own baseline here. Two eight go first quarter. Palego will check back in here as Coach Vanderendi will 
Send Dykstra to the bench for the first time. Both coaches have gone six deep so far into the rotation, and I don't think we'll expect to see either Coach Kane or Coach Vander any go much deeper than that. 2-12 in the first, all knotted at seven. Left corner for Seely London. Skips it just to her left side. Rasta Combe is waiting for it. Starts a right-hand dribble. The freshman blows into the paint. Hook shot, good, and a foul. Circus shot from the freshman. Able to fall pure, and one more coming up at the strike. What a finish that was, and West Catholic goes back on top with 201 in the first. At the second foul on FGR, free throw is pure. Three-point play is good, and that is now six for the leading freshman for Coach Vanderenny. Full court pressure once again beaten up the floor by a weaving Rodriguez. Throws left block to Veronica Fredericks. Right hand push shot off the window and good. Fredericks now with four able answer right back with 148 in the first. 10-9 to nine West Catholic. Palega top of the key. Stares at it, goes around an Asakoma screen to the left wing. Right wing on Emma Tuttle. Right corner to Rebecca. Here's Tuttle curling free throw line. Left wing Asakoma, the freshman. Asakome throws left corner on to Rebecca Tuttle. Drives the baseline, skip pass, stolen clean away by Charlotte Miller down low. Runs the break, throws over the timeline, poked by Seeley London, stolen by Polega. West Catholic back the other way, 117, first quarter. 10-9, the Falcon lead. Up top, Polega. Skips right elbow to Asakome. Asakome will give it up to Polega, skips it left wing on to Tuttle. Tuttle will reset the offense. Rebecca around the screen. Throws left wing to her sister Emma who starts the left hand dribble. Drops it for a curling Polega. Trying to work around the screen. Spins into a three off the back rim. No. Board chased down by a sprinting Rodriguez. Here's Vanessa up the middle of the floor. Rodriguez will curl left wing with it. Final 40 seconds of the first. 10-9 West Catholic. Right wing, Charlotte Miller to the free throw line. Grabbed and fouled by a leaning Tuttle. That's the third of the quarter on the Falcons. First on Rebecca Tuttle. Dykstra and Paige Klinger will check in for the first time in the ball game as Edmondson is back in on the other side for the Irish. Baseline left inbound, traveling black uniforms for Ann Arbor father Gabriel Richard. Unbeaten on the season, trailing by one down to the final 33 seconds of the first quarter. Left wing, here's Ava Rodriguez. Skips to her sister left corner. Vanessa curls. Into the paint, leaning left hand shot, whips it around a pair of defenders and scores. And just like that, Vanessa puts her team back on top. It's 11 10 lead. Left wing, Dykstra with space. Tees up a triple off the back rim. No. Board tracked in by Seely London with 13 seconds. Possession continues to Palega up top. Crossover dribble. Picked up defensively by Vanessa Rodriguez. Skips left wing on Emma Tuttle. Filters it there for Dykstra. Dykstra drives, stops, pops a shot at the block off the back rim. No. And the buzzer sounds at the end of the shot. That'll end the first 11-10. Game living up to the hype so far. FGR over West Catholic at the end of one. We'll step aside. Be right back here from the Breslin. Somebody once said life moves pretty fast. And that's exactly how we like it. Want to build something? Great. Start businesses, build bridges, raise a whole city. Future in fighting crime? Want to save lives? Do it all here. But you've got to go forward fast. Because today is now, and tomorrow is soon. And to get ahead of the game, you got to get ahead of your time. This is your future, so take it and move all of us forward. Stone University. The professors are very open to helping whenever they can. Academic excellence, character-driven athletics, Christ-centered community involvement. Cornerstone has been a great opportunity for me to grow as a leader, just being able to approach people and be warm and welcoming and hospitable. Experience it for yourself. Attend a Golden Eagle Day at Cornerstone for a taste of campus life and the chance to meet faculty and staff. To arrange a visit for your high school junior or senior, go to cornerstone.edu. Cornerstone University. Build a life that matters. All right, welcome back everyone to the Breslin Center. Both teams, or both uh, schools, I should say, going through their in-between quarter shooting challenges with students from either student section out and completing things and a fresh eight minutes up on the board here at the Breslin Center. Thanks, as always, to Farmers Insurance along with Centennial Securities and, uh, in particular, Farmers Insurance welcoming on kind of starting end of this year and the next year with uh, the Bennett Center Agency, which is located on uh, 28th Street in Wyoming, our, our new uh, presenting uh, 
sponsor and, and presenting insurance agency with our longtime partners at Farmers Insurance. So certainly thank them for coming on board here for next year with uh, game night. Uh, as uh, we are still going here, of course, if you saw some of the storylines, uh, mostly just revolving around me and, uh, and my family and uh, some different things going on with, uh, with the fire. A complete loss, first off, to MGN, to, to everything we had. A huge thank you to Brock Conkle, to everyone at, at, at Michigan Sports Radio for, uh, for their support. First off, Brock helping put together some of the gear to allow us to do this game, but also uh, a ton more uh, support that, that uh, I've been given by uh, everyone at Michigan Sports Radio throughout the year or throughout uh, the past week, I should say. We are back underway. A slap of the floor, as they customarily do out of the West Catholic defense, and they go to work on their own end of the floor. Skip pass, left block. Edmondson turns the back and travels through the good defense from Paige Klinger. It goes back the other way with the Falcons in the home whites. Traveling black uniforms for the Irish. And again, Alicia Dykstra will get ready to run the offense right here. Dykstra with... One made basket in this one between the leg dribble, trailing by one. 20 seconds gone in the second. Feeds it right elbow on to Tuttle. Turns the back. Feeds left wing on to Dykstra. Up fake. Now we'll start up the, the dribble and start up the offense and redirect things in between the rings. Watched over there defensively by Charlotte Miller. Gets a double screen set up top. Dykstra goes around it. Races down the right side. Feeds all the way back left wing to Seeley London. Low pass. They will pick it off the floor. Drive left baseline and give it up top onto a curling Dykstra who will again reset the offense as once again Coach Vander and his team taking their time to get into it offensively. First minute nearly gone. Second quarter. They trail by one. Dykstra drives left now drives back to the right hand side. Extra pass. Left wing. Seeley London with space. Splashes that one down. And the Falcons go back on top with 6.56 in the third. Here's the full court defense. Thrown ahead to Rodriguez, able to rip it away through some pressure. Drives to the free throw line. Pull up jumper. Ava Rodriguez fouled from behind. And that will send her to the line. Rodriguez at the line. That one up and good. So Ava Rodriguez able to find her way on to the score sheet. Her sister Vanessa leading the way offensively for the Irish right now. 6.49 to go in the second. West Catholic's lead is cut on down here at the stripe as both are able to go for Ava Rodriguez and knocks the game up at 11 with 6.45 and less to go in the second. Dykstra top of the key, throws it on to a cutting Pelega Bobbles around along the baseline and touches out of bounds as Pelega still looking for her first points of the ball game, and that will head back the other way. 6.39 in the first uh, half. Working our way through the second quarter. All knotted at 13. Girls D2 state semifinal here on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. Vanessa Rodriguez beats the pressure with the weave over the timeline. Throws left corner to her sister. Quick trigger three from Ava. Off the right side of the rim. No. Fight for the rebound down low is going to go on the Falcons. And it will go on Alicia Dykstra. That one, the first foul on Dykstra. Second on the team of the quarter. 6.25 in the second. Irish of a baseline left inbound here with Charlotte Miller. Miller, right block. Got it into a curling Fredericks. Fredericks, right hand push shot is pure. She's got six in the game. And FGR has gone back on top with 6.17 in the second. Dykstra right, ring, right wing running the offense to the corner. Poked out of bounds by Miller will stay baseline right with West Catholic. Coach Vanderandy barking in a new call here offensively on the other side of the floor away from her as West Catholic drives left to right across the radio dial here. It'll be thrown in from the right corner. Dykstra to put it in. Got an Asakome, the freshman. Asakome drives to the free throw line. Hook shot off the window. No. Board wrapped, ripped down by Fredericks. And back the other way comes Charlotte Miller near side right to left. Miller with 5.59 in the second. Skip pass. Left block. Turning back. Veronica Fredericks throws up top. Catch and shoot three. Vanessa Rodriguez off the heel. No. Board tracked in by a sprinting Tuttle. Left wing for Pelega. 5.48 in the second. Pelega drives the baseline. Cut off and fouled with a blocking call. The first of the quarter on the Irish. That one gets whistled on Vanessa Rodriguez for her first of the ball game. 5.46 second quarter. And Cora Williams, the six foot junior, checks back in here for Fredericks. Again, the Irish have... Only rolled six deep so far. Their only substitution is swapping Fredericks for Williams. They're, they're two centers on the roster. Pelega drives in left wing. Underhand handoff for a backing Dykstra top of the key. And Alicia Dykstra will reset the offense with 535 in the second. 
trailing by two around the screen. Dykstra blows into the lane, jump stop, left block, hook shot, short, board tracked in by a reaching Cora Williams. Irish will beat some of the pressure up the right side of the floor over the timeline with Miller. Push pass, right corner for Vanessa Rodriguez. Drives the baseline, handoff, middle of the paint, Edmondson, two-hand feed short. Board tracked in by Rodriguez, pass along the baseline, stolen by Pelega, and West Catholic resets it. Nearly three minutes gone in the second quarter, 15-13, FGR over West Catholic. Top of the key, Emma Tuttle. Tuttle hands it off for Dykstra's had the ball in her hands a lot to the free throw line. Dump pass, poked and stolen away by Cora Williams. Able to read that lobbing passing lane well. Back the other way come the Irish right wing with Miller. Miller, two-hand pass, extra feed, left wing. Vanessa Rodriguez lobbing down left block on to Williams. Out of her reach, but is able to somewhat regather the basketball. Whip it up top where it's stolen by Pelega. Pelega runs the break quickly back the other way. Push pass to the corner. Stolen away by Vanessa Rodriguez. She'll underhand feed it over the timeline. Sprinting to the basket. Edmondson. Two-hand feed is short. Back the other way with some pace. Here comes Seeley London and the Falcons all the way to the basket. Floater off the window and good for Seeley London. And we're tied at 15 with 4.15 to go in the second. <clears throat> Irish will slow it down with Vanessa Rodriguez. Ava curls to the left corner. As Rodriguez will take a look at things, slowly dribbling to the right wing. We're past the halfway point now, the second quarter. 3.59 and less. Around a Williams screen. Rodriguez met by Asakome, left wing. Drops it for a curling Ava. Ava to the free throw line. Skip pass. Nice find driving to the basket. Williams and the Irish go back on top off the good vision and the good feed there. West Catholic going back to work. Pelega feeds free throw line to a turning Tuttle. Left wing, catch and shoot three. Seely London misses everything strong. Fall out of bounds. FGR takes it back over. Substitutions on either side. Fredericks will check in here for Edmondson. And at the same time, Coach Vanderendi wants her first time out of the game and she'll get it. We'll take one right alongside the Falcons and be back here from the Breslin Center. And hearing experts sell and service several brands of hearing aids. Are you having trouble having a conversation or unable to hear the latest play of the game? We perform comprehensive hearing exams and use real ear measurements to ensure optimal functioning hearing aids for your unique needs. Our highly trained doctors of audiology are dedicated to helping you reconnect with your world. Visit MichiganHearingExperts.com to find a location near you and take the first step towards better hearing with Michigan Hearing Experts. We're back to the Breslin Center, everyone. 3.31 to go, second quarter. Girls D2 State Semifinals here on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. West Catholic and Ann Arbor father Gabriel Richard. It's FGR up right now, 17-15. to And what's been a back-and-forth game that has fully lived up to the hype between the unbeaten Irish and the one-loss Falcons. Both teams looking to see who gets to take on Detroit Edison tomorrow. Full court, diamond and one trap is on. For the Falcons, as the Irish go to work, skip feed to the right side from Rodriguez on to Miller. Miller in the backcourt. Into a double team, throws it over the timeline where Alpha Leap, Ava Rodriguez settles it down, throws left corner to Vanessa, drives the baseline, floater strong, board tracked in by Rebecca Tuttle, weaves it up the middle of the floor and will start up the offense. Right corner to Seeley London. Seely London curls to the top of the key. Throws left wing to Pelega, who has been held silent so far offensively. She'll drive left side. Two-hand shot attempt, blocked from behind and fouled by Ava Rodriguez. Let's see if it's a, going to be a shooting foul. It will not be. will be called on the floor before that kind of wild attempt for either a pass or a shot went up from Pelega. Two fouls on either team now in the quarter. 3-0-1 to go in the second. Seely London, some issues to get this one in. And a five-second violation gets whistled. And it will go back the other way. And right to left, here comes the Irish. They'll match it up against some full-court man-to-man pressure right here. Inbounded along the baseline to Williams, the junior center. Gets it on to a sprinting Vanessa Rodriguez over the timeline. To the corner, Ava, triple try, splash. The sisters connect again. And the lead is up to five for FGR, the largest we've seen in the ballgame. 2.45 in the second, 20-15. to Asakome to the right wing. Throwing left wing to Seely London. Seely London skips it down left block to Tuttle. Emma Tuttle turns the back. Wild left hand shot. Out of bounds first. Put the foot on the end line. It'll go back the other way before the whipping shot. 
as Alicia Dykstra will check back in here for Emma Tuttle. 2.33, second quarter. And again, it'll be a full court man-to-man -man look defensively for West Catholic. From the baseline, baseball pass all the way down the floor from Charlotte Miller. Hits the driving Rodriguez. Reverse layup is strong. And back the other way come the Falcons. Seeley London, left baseline drive. Floater blocked out of bounds by Williams will stay, or by Fredericks, I should say, will stay with West Catholic. Both the bigs, Fredericks and Williams, out there right now for Coach Kane and FGR. 2.23, second quarter, 20-15, to 15, the Irish lead. Baseline left inbound for Pelega. Got a left corner to Rebecca Tuttle. Left wing for Seeley London. Back left corner, Pelega. Quick trigger three. Off the back rim, no. Board tracked down by Asakome. Asakome turns the back. Works the left-hand dribble, now changes hands, drops it for a curling Dykstra right wing who will reset the offense in between the rings. Watch there defensively by the junior Charlotte Miller. 2.02, second quarter, five-point lead for FGR. Big crossover dribble, left wing Dykstra. Up top, Asakome tries another three. Off the left side of the rim, rattles out. Board tracked in by Rodriguez, off and running. Here's Ava Rodriguez over the timeline. To the top of the key with 147 in the second, leading by five. Rodriguez drives, left-hand floater off the window, no. Rebound poked up by Pelega onto a sprinting Rebecca Tuttle. Tuttle stops, feeds right wing, Dykstra catch and shoot, three, splash! Falcons within a score as Dykstra able to knock down the triple. She now has five in the ball game. Here's the full court pressure. Right side for Miller. Skips over the timeline. Tava Rodriguez, left wing to Vanessa. 119, second quarter. Reaching pass. Left block onto a driving Fredericks. Hook shot strong. Fight for the ball. Out of bounds and a foul is going to get whistled on the fight as well. That'll go on Cora Williams. It'll go back the other way with the Falcons who have got a chance to take the lead back right here or tie things. 114 second quarter, 20 to 18 FGR. Asakome will take a seat as Emma Tuttle comes back out on the floor. Again, the rotation has been six deep only for the Falcons. Are actually, seven deep with the quickly seeing Klinger. And six deep on the other side for the Irish. Right wing, Polega. Able to rip it away from the tight defense from Rodriguez. Right corner for Seeley London. Drives free throw line. Whip pass to a leaping Rebecca Tuttle left wing. Tuttle starts the dribble. Works the baseline. Leaning two-hand shot. Gets the rattle. Gets the spin. And we're tied. A tough one in the lane from Rebecca Tuttle. Everyone nodded at 20. Against the pressure, Miller defended by Emma Tuttle with a left-hand dribble. Got it over the timeline, poked in the backcourt, regathered. Offense reset for the Irish with 32 seconds to go. It will be Vanessa Rodriguez working it slowly with 24. Crossover, underhand feed, spiked out of bounds by Polega along the right side of the baseline. And it will remain FGR basketball with 21.6 in the second. Everyone nodded at 20. Charlotte Miller to throw in baseline right, really all the way down to the corner. Skips it in off the foot of a reaching Pelega, and it will stay in the right corner on the second T in state of Michigan State along the baseline. Now make that the S in state, where it will be thrown in by Charlotte Miller. Asakome, the freshman forward, checks back in. Skip pass, left block, Rodriguez, up fake. Hook shot over top of Seeley London, no. Board tracked in by Miller. Up top on for a driving Ava Rodriguez. Whip pass, right wing, Miller, catch and shoot three short. With 10 seconds, West Catholic off and running. They can take the lead. Alicia Dykstra feeding left block on to Pelega. Back to Dykstra, left corner with three. Jacks a triple, missed it all strong. Ball out of bounds with .1 on the clock. And that will just about take us to the halftime break. All knotted at 20. Full court press will get set up right here for the Irish inbound. And it's just inbounded to Fredericks. And that is where the half is going to end. A back and forth affair that absolutely lived up to the billing. We were expecting to, this one to 20 all at the break in this one. The Bigs doing a lot of the work right now. Fredericks with six. Nasakoma each with six. Leading the way. For, uh, for their respective teams down low. We've got a lot more besides that to break down as well. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more on our Farmers Insurance Halftime Show. We'll have some scoring along with uh, a look back at some highlights from the first half of this one. All tied at 20. Girls D2 State Semifinals, FGR and West Catholic. 
Looking for a great place to buy a used truck or car? Check out Extreme Truck and Auto Center, located at 1098 O'Malley Drive in Coopersville. They have a huge selection of trucks, cars, vans, and SUVs. Stop by their lot or give them a call at 616-384-3777. You can check out their inventory at xtacenter.com. Michigan hearing experts sell and service several brands of hearing aids. Are you having trouble having a conversation or unable to hear the latest play of the game? We perform comprehensive hearing exams and use real ear measurements to ensure optimal functioning hearing aids for your unique needs. Our highly trained doctors of audiology are dedicated to helping you reconnect with your world. Visit michiganhearingexperts.com to find a location near you and take the first step towards better hearing with Michigan Hearing Experts. Cornerstone University. The professors are very open to helping whenever they can. Academic excellence, character-driven athletics, Christ-centered community involvement. Cornerstone has been a great opportunity for me to grow as a leader, just being able to approach people and be warm and welcoming and hospitable. Experience it for yourself. Attend a Golden Eagle Day at Cornerstone for a taste of campus life and the chance to meet faculty and staff. To arrange a visit for your high school junior or senior, go to cornerstone.edu. Cornerstone University. Build a life that matters. The Grand Rapids Sports Hall of Fame celebrates the city's rich sports history by honoring prominent West Michigan athletes and those who have contributed greatly to sports on a local, state, or national level. A class is elected each year and then honored at an induction ceremony in the fall. They also prevent annual events in support of West Michigan athletics, and they raise funds to support local youth organizations and charities. Follow them on Facebook or check out the pictures and biographies of all 181 inductees at grshof.com. All right, welcome back, everyone. Halftime here uh, on the Farmers Insurance Halftime Show from the Breslin Center. Nate Dreyer with you this evening. All not out of 20 games, certainly living up to the billing we expected between the unbeaten uh, father, Gabriel Richard, Irish out of Ann Arbor, and, of course, Grand Rapids West Catholic Falcons, 26-1 and on the season. And uh, a couple of teams that certainly have got state championship in mind, and the winner will get a chance to extend their season on to play Detroit Edison uh, tomorrow night in the final game of the day. Take a look at uh, some of the scoring on uh, screen from the first half. Uh, Vanessa Rodriguez right now leading all scores with seven and it's uh, Asakome, the, the freshman for West Catholic, coming up with six of her own and doing some of that damage from deep as well uh, along with an and one that certainly was able to uh, charge the uh, the West Catholic offense. Paige Seeley London came off the bench to have five for Coach uh, Vanderendi, a big part of the attack there as well. Let's take a look at some highlights back from our first half of play in this one. And let's start out with West Catholic as Tuttle was able to get a nice feed and finish right here. Defending her is Edmondson. Starts the right-hand dribble. Looking for Tuttle. Got it there right corner to Rebecca. Tuttle drives the baseline. Skips it for her sister. Left-hand push shot. Good off the window. We're tied again. The Tuttles connect, and Emma gets the finish. And then it was the freshman, Asakome, the, the, the standout freshman who... I mean, you can't even imagine what she's going to be over the next four years for Coach Vander and a Falcons team that uh, will certainly have many more trips to the Breslin Center uh, under her watch and all the other great talent in this program. But this and one, the highlight of uh, the freshman's first half and her way to leading West Catholic offensively to this tie. Just to her left side, Rasta Combe is waiting for it. Starts a right-hand dribble. The freshman blows into the paint. Hook shot, good, and a foul. Circus shot from the freshman, able to... Ball pure, and one more coming up at the... Cora Williams, standout junior, came off the bench with some big moments and big minutes, I should say, for Coach Kane and uh, Father Gabriel. The junior had this big two that momentarily put FGR back on top. Rodriguez met by Asakome, left wing. Drops it for a curling Ava. Ava to the free throw line. Skip pass, nice find, driving to the basket, Williams. And the Irish go back on top off the good vision and the good. Lastly, we heard from Emma Tuttle a little bit earlier on. How about Rebecca Tuttle? The two right before the end of the half that ultimately wound up nodding everyone at 20 going into the break. Drives free throw line, whip pass to a leaping Rebecca Tuttle left wing. Tuttle starts the dribble, works the baseline, leaning two-hand shot, gets the rattle, gets the spin, and we're tied. A tough one in the lane from Rebecca Tuttle. Everyone nodded at 20. 
All right, so that wraps it up at the break. All tied at 20, a game that certainly is uh, going to be a lot of fun down the stretch. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. A lot more to get to on our Farmers Insurance Halftime Show. As the voice of Michigan's student athletes, the Student Advisory Council's role is to convey the message of how high school sports should be played. We are responsible for helping the MHSAA maintain a positive and healthy atmosphere in which interscholastic athletes can thrive. We believe that athletes should be competitive, sportsmanlike, and excel academically. We believe that students in the stands should have fun, but not take away the focus from the game. We believe coaches should act like teachers, helping student athletes develop while still keeping high school sports in perspective. We believe that parents should always be positive role models and support their child's decisions. We believe officials commit their own time to high school sports. And respect should always be shown and given to them. The most important goal for student athletes is to enjoy high school sports while keeping a high level of respect between all those involved in the games. Enjoy, 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 the, enjoy the game. game. We are Centennial Securities, an independent firm with a team of committed professionals who strive to exceed our clients' expectations by giving outstanding service. We're proud to be part of our community where we live and work. If it's important, it's not worth compromising. Which is why with Farmers, you don't have to compromise quality to get great savings on your insurance. I got this. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common. Officials. Every game. Every meet. Every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns. No three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. All right, welcome back here to game night. Nate Dreyer with you. Court sat at the Breslin Center working our way through our Farmers Insurance halftime show. All nodded at 20 at the break between uh, Ann Arbor father Gabriel Richard and Grand Rapids West Catholic uh, Falcons out on the floor first, starting up their warm-up. The Irish just now working their way out of uh, one of those Michigan State Spartan tunnels uh, down to broadcast right. Final minute 40, both teams wrapping up their warm-ups. Let's take a look at some of the keys to the second half, which these coaching staffs are certainly looking for. I think for Coach Vander Ending for West Catholic, first off on the defensive end of the floor, their ability to create some turnovers and steals. They did it on some of the first possessions of the game. I think... Uh, FGR did a very, very good job of adjusting, especially using their terrific uh, one-two punch and Vanessa and Ava Rodriguez in the backcourt along with Charlotte Miller for a one-two-three punch to be able to move the ball against that pressure. But you saw Coach Vanderendy go to maybe some more man-to-man full-court pressure instead of the, the havoc trap, and you wonder what else they may have to, to draw up to maybe get a couple more easy baskets off steals as this team has certainly thrived to be able to do throughout the year. Also, offensively, Reese Palega, the senior, held completely quiet in uh, – the the first half, uh, a D1 player at the next level and a player that had 15 points to lead the way in a low-scoring uh, defensive battle against Vicksburg last time out on Tuesday night. So certainly you have to look to Pelega to be the key offensively and probably defensively as well for Coach Vanderendi as uh, she looks to uh, execute on her third trip to the Breslin Center for uh, FGR. They did a really, really good job with a bit of an advantage in the post. Going up against the freshman, uh, Asakome, who certainly held her own on the offensive end of the floor, was able to pick up six points there offensively. But both Williams and Fredericks did a good job to kind of help partially lead the way offensively on both ends of the floor. There might be a little bit of a, of, of a mismatch there. Not necessarily a mismatch, but an advantage so far in this game for an FGR team that typically likes to shoot the basketball. Vanessa Ava Rodriguez kind of quiet from deep. Charlotte Miller hasn't quite been able to find her shot either. So the game has been really led through the post. And I think on that end of the floor, the post will continue to be very key for the Irish. 
FGR, the traveling black uniforms. Numbers in white, Irish and script across the chest. Also in white, the home whites for West Catholic. Numbers in green, trimmed in green, and West Catholic written across the chest. It'll be right to left across the radio dial. West Catholic getting the ball to start the second half. And we are underway with Rebecca Chuddle's dribble. Throws free throw line on a skip to Asakome. The freshman turns the back, drives right to the basket. Hook shot, falls short. Rebound ripped down by Edmondson. And the offense left to right will get slowed down right here by Ava Rodriguez. Defended by Rebecca Tuttle. Left wing for Edmondson. Top of the key, Fredericks. Worked right wing to Ava Rodriguez. Top of the key, Miller with space. Triple try, falls short off the front left side of the rim. Board out of bounds, off of the Irish, and West Catholic takes over. 31 seconds gone, third quarter. And the Falcons take it back. Everyone all knotted up at 20 right now. Winner will have Detroit Edison tomorrow night. Again, the last game of the night for D2, like the last game of the night happening here in the second of the two D2 games from East Lansing. Skip pass into the paint, looking for Dykstra. Nearly stolen away, regathered left wing by Rebecca Tuttle. She'll throw up top to Alicia Dykstra. Off the up fake, starts a right-hand dribble, and will once again slow it down and reset the offense. 7.05 and less to go third quarter. No one has scored yet in the second. We're still tied at 20. Here's Alicia Dykstra, the junior, to the right wing. Stops right elbow, hands it off for a curling Pelega. Jump pass, left wing, Asakome, hook shot in the lane, rattles out. Board down to Edmondson. And the Irish will reset the offense with Vanessa Rodriguez left to right over the timeline. West Catholic falling back into a man-to-man half-court defense here. 6.44 in the third. Around the screen, left wing Rodriguez with a left-hand dribble. Throws right wing to Miller. Side steps the defender. Pull-up shot, free throw line. Tipped around by Pelega. Falls short off the front rim. And Pelega takes down the board with six and a half to go in the third. Pelega steps into a deep three. Top of the key. Falls short off the front rim. Board tracked in by Charlotte Miller. She's off and running up the left side of the floor with 623. Left wing gave it on to a dropping Ava Rodriguez. Triple try. Falls short. Goes straight out of bounds off the front rim. Both offenses fighting it to start the second quarter, even more, or second half, I should say. Even a little bit more than they were fighting it in the first half. 6-18, third quarter. Defense leads the way for both these teams normally, and certainly doing so this evening at the Breslin Center. Nearly to the two-minute point gone in the third. Right wing, Rebecca Tuttle. Throws up top to Asakome. Tries the three off the connector. No, board out of bounds. Last touch by Veronica Fredericks is reaching from behind Emma Tuttle and poked down out along the baseline. It will stay here, baseline left, with Rebecca Tuttle to throw in. 5.59, third quarter, tied at 20. Throwing free throw line to Polega, still looking for her first points of the ball game. Defended top of the key by Rodriguez, down the right side of the lane. Tough shot over top of Rodriguez. Off the window and good. We'll see if that gets Polega going as she's got her first points of the ball game. West Catholic also going back on top and will be able to set up their press out of it. Miller angling left across the floor, able to beat the pressure. The Irish left corner, throw it on to Vanessa Rodriguez. Triple try, splash, and an answer right back. 23-22, FGR goes back on top, and Rodriguez becomes our first scorer in double digits in the ball game. She's got 10. Right block, Tuttle, left wing for Dykstra. Angle drive, jump stop, left block, works the pivot. Feeds it free throw line on the underhand to Asakome. To the right elbow. Emma Tuttle up top to Pelega to reset the offense. Three minutes gone, third quarter. FGR back up one. Pelega around a screen. Jump pass, left corner. On for Tuttle. Tuttle left wing Asakome. Here's the freshman. Works the jab against Sage Edmondson. Starts the right hand dribble. Feeds it in between the rings to the Spartan logo. Where Alicia Dykstra will again take her time to reset the offense here. Five out offense, Dykstra drive, jump pass, fouled first of the quarter on either team. That one will get whistled on Veronica Fredericks for her second of the ball game. No one really in foul trouble yet. Fredericks now with two and two on the other side for Rebecca Tuttle. With that foul though, Fredericks will take a seat as Cora Williams will get her first action of the second half. Baseline right inbound, 442 third quarter. FGR up by one, West Catholic the basketball, lobbed right wing into Dykstra. Up fake, left hand dribble into the lane. Floater from eight, rattles down. Tough finish from Alicia Dykstra, puts the Falcons right back on top. She's got a tough seven in the ball game. Rodriguez weaves through the pressure over the timeline. Right wing pass on, or right block pass onto a driving Williams. Right hand shot blocked. And on the fight for the rebound, it's ripped out of there by Pelega. Here comes Dykstra and the Falcons, 4 15, third quarter. 
Dykstra stops, lobs it in the paint to Asakome, rips it away from a pair of defenders. Left wing on to Tuttle, up fake, drive, floater inside the free throw line is strong. The board is tracked down by Ava Rodriguez with four minutes to go in the third quarter. Left wing for Miller, up fake, angle drive, stops left block and works it left wing back on for Rodriguez. Ava feeding free throw line, travel is whistled first as she shuffled the feet on the handoff to Sage Edmondson. 3.52, third quarter, 24-23, West Catholic back on top. Unbeaten, Father Gabriel Richard, one loss, West Catholic living up to the hype in the semifinal here. Winner has Detroit Edison tomorrow night in a true heavyweight clash regardless of the matchup. Right corner, Asakome, the freshman. Gets a screen from Dykstra, pops a triple, rattles out, rebound. And a fight for the ball, and a foul is going to get whistled on Cora Williams as it was tipped out of there by Tuttle, but she got grabbed by Williams from behind. <laughs> that the second, or the third foul, I should say, on Williams. So Williams now with three. The lone player on the floor with or on either roster with three fouls right now. Inbound at a right quarter to Rebecca Tuttle. Drives to the free throw line. Worked around left wing, extra pass to Dykstra. Jab, stutter step to the, to the line. Down the left side of the lane. Poked out of there by a reaching Miller. Two a side scrum on the floor. Held ball, alternating possession. Will go the Irish's way. 3.16 to go, third quarter, 24-23. It'll be the junior guard Miller on the inbound here. Full court pressure coming up as Miller will inbound from her own baseline. Near side going left to right. West Catholic will Set up the diamond in one, Havoc trap. Near side inbound, Vanessa Rodriguez. Splits a pair of defenders, went chasing down to the floor, lost the handle, stolen by Seeley London. Lob pass across the floor, Tuttle. Spiked out of bounds by a jumping Miller. It'll go baseline right with the Falcons after they force the turnover. 3.07, third quarter, West Catholic by one in the D2 semifinal. Tuttle to throw in, lobs up top, Seeley London. Hands it off left wing for Pelega. The senior drives, pull up shot, free throw line, short board. Touched last out of bounds in the scrum by Vanessa Rodriguez. It will stay with West Catholic baseline right. Three minutes exactly to go in the third. 24-23, West Catholic the lead in the basketball. Right corner for Dykstra. Dykstra angles to the free throw line, turns the back into the paint, protects the ball. Two-hand shot off the window, hangs and falls as Dykstra is able to complete the two. And here comes the pressure. Dykstra now with nine in the ball game. Pressure beaten by Rodriguez against two, sent down to the floor, and a foul on the Falcons' Alicia Dykstra. That will be the second whistle on the junior. 2.43, third quarter, 26-23. West Catholic leading. Work on our way inside the final three minutes of the third quarter. Left side in the front court, it will be Miller to inbound here. Man to man, half court pressure. Pelega guards the inbound, lobbed into the backcourt to Vanessa Rodriguez. The sophomore will reset the offense here for Coach Kane. Left wing to Williams, hands it off for Rodriguez. Vanessa to the top of the key, harassed and fouled by Emma Tuttle. That will be whistle number one on Tuttle with 235 in the third. Two on either team now in the quarter. Again, left side inbound in front of her own bench. Miller to throw in, and once again, Pelega in the home white jerseys with the size advantage will harass the inbound. Miller skips in front of the timeline to Vanessa Rodriguez. Left wing to Miller. Miller top of the key, Williams. Williams looking to go inside, shuffles the feet and travels, is working the pivot foot, kind of dragged that back foot, surveying inside, turns it over, and the Falcons take over, 225, third quarter. Asakome will come in here from Amatuto for Coach Vander Endy. And we've got a timeout on the floor. And we will take one as well. No go anywhere, we'll be right back here from the Breslin Center. The 76 Diner and Truck Stop would like to invite you and your families to come and check out their diner. With locations in both Byron Center and Coopersville, they're a great place to stop before or after the game. They have a wide variety of menu choices to feed all the kids. They serve breakfast hot all day and they're able to accommodate all of your large group needs. 
Their full menu is available for takeout orders, and they have online ordering at 76truckstopdiner.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Breslin Center in game night on Michigan Sports Radio 225, third quarter. Nate Dreyer with you. And attention all golfers want to keep your game in shape. The leaderboard indoor golf has you covered. With over 500 courses, a full bar, and 17 TVs, the leaderboard indoor golf is the perfect place to work on your game. Host events and parties and compete in leagues. Visit theleaderboardgolf.com or call 616-500-8709 to book your tee time today. That's theleaderboardgolf.com, 225, third quarter. I think a good time for the leaderboard golf. We, we had some spring weather as we've turned to spring, and now certainly we, if you're a golfer, are back to being outdoors right now, or indoors, I should say, at a place like the leaderboard with uh, some of the weather today. Right wing, Rebecca Tuttle starts up the offense, drives to the right block up top for Asakome. The freshman drives, gets tangled up and fouled on the floor. That'll be the third of the quarter, and I think we'll get whistled on Sage Edmondson. It will not. That uh, whistle is going to go on Bethy Benz, the senior, who is seeing her first action of the ball game, and with that, picks up her first foul. Edmondson will be the one now taking a seat. Those Veronica Fredericks checks in. 2.12 to go, third quarter. Baseline right, inbound for the Falcons, leading by three. Lobbed in right wing to Pelega. Pelega skips it right block to Tuttle. Double team, left wing whip pass. Asakome drives. Floater from 10 feet short. Board tracked down through some contact in all directions initially by the Irish, then ripped away by Seeley London on the fight for the basketball. And a foul gets whistled on the Irish. And they're Ava Rodriguez. So now, for the first time today, we're closing on a bonus. Fourth on the team. That's foul number one on Rodriguez. Baseline left inbound for Tuttle. 158 third quarter. West Catholic by three. Inbounded left corner to Pelega. Stepping away from the defender. Skips left wing to Dykstra. Dykstra grabbed on two and defended here by Rodriguez. Drives. Ball out of bounds. And it's going to go back the other way. Dykstra came up with a confused look on her face, thinking that she was grabbed. That's why she lost the basketball. It will be the Irish's ball, though. Diamond and one. Havoc trap is on against the inbound. Near side, Ava Rodriguez. Hounded defensively by Seeley London. Throws left side to Miller. Working against the pressure. It's Asakome in the backcourt. Miller skips it over the timeline to Rodriguez. Here's Ava. Drops it for Miller. Top of the key. Jump stop. Free throw line. Floater blocked by Polega. And Polega tracks it down. Outlet pass. Over the timeline, jumped and stolen by Ava Rodriguez. Left corner to Miller, toes the line, tries a three. Off the back rim, no. Board into Dykstra. 123, third quarter, 26 23. Thrown over the timeline, Pelega. Right corner with space. Celia London, low driving three. Off the front rim, no. Board tracked in by Tuttle. Leaning, reverse layup. Circus shot, hangs on the connector and falls for Tuttle. What a finish that was. 59 seconds to go, third quarter. Right side drive, Rodriguez over the timeline. Gets grabbed and fouled. Edmondson will check in here. Third foul on West Catholic for the Irish. The Irish will send Dykstra to the bench. As both Tuttle's now out there. Right block. On Edmondson, turns the back, throws up top on Rodriguez, down by five. 28-23 with 49 seconds to go. Largest lead of the game for West Catholic. Both teams have led by five in the ball game. Underhand handoff, left corner, Ava Rodriguez, baseline drive. Nice drop in the lane, Veronica Fredericks in rhythm two is good. And Fredericks has now got eight in the ball game. Back to the way come the Falcons with the final 33 seconds in the third. They lead by three. Right side drive, Rebecca Tuttle. Whips it right wing for her sister. Emma will feed it to Seeley London, top of the key. It's a screen set from Pelega. Now hands it off to Pelega on the curl with 17. Only two points in the ball game for the senior. Here's Pelega defended by Ava Rodriguez with 12. Walks to the right wing with 11. Pelega with nine, leading by three late third quarter. Pelega crossover with six. Drives into the lane. Tough pass, evades a pair of teammates as she whipped that one through a pair of defenders as well. Out of bounds. Irish will take it with 2.5. 28-25 West Catholic, near side inbound. Coming up for Miller against the pressure on her own end of the floor. Skips along the baseline for Rodriguez. Here's Vanessa to the half court line. Heaves a three. Missed it short. That'll do it for the third. West Catholic by three after three. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the conclusion 
to the D2 State Semifinal here on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. What would you do with some extra time? Shop Fast Lane today. This was founded based on the belief that the interests of our clients must always come first. We listen and understand your objectives before making a recommendation. We customize a portfolio of investments to fit your goals. It is our commitment to provide a strong line of communication. Our services include family wealth management, saving for retirement, and estate planning and trust services. Getting started is as easy as picking up the phone. After all, when everything is said and done, isn't it about time? It's the final game, folks. This one wins the series. Struck out with the cheap seats? Important things aren't worth compromising. At Farmers, we offer both quality insurance and great savings. Here, take mine. We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Welcome back, everyone, to the Breslin Center. One quarter to go here in the D2 State Semifinal. A final eight minutes, 28-25 after three. West Catholic leading Father Gabriel Richard. Is, it's been back and forth, and it's been exactly what we thought. Defense has led the way for both of these uh, these coaches as it's turned into what really looks like a first to 40 win for two teams that give up less than 35 points per game on the season. So certainly makes sense in this one. It's been uh, a lot of good work through the post, been uh, in large part leading the way. In this one, Veronica Fredericks uh, with eight points. Uh, good work there. Asa Kome, the freshman, with uh, six more on the other side for West Catholic. The leaders, though, on the perimeter, ten points for Vanessa Rodriguez. Leads all scores for FGR. West Catholic being led by the nine for Alicia Dykstra. We are back underway, right to left over the timeline. West Catholic, the basketball in the home white. The final quarter, Asa Kome, top of the key. Hands off on the curl for Seeley London. Gave it there to Emma Tuttle. Drops it on a quick handoff for Alicia Dykstra. Drives free throw line. Clutches up a shot over top of a defender from inside the line. Missed it short. Board tracked in by Emma Tuttle. Offense reset by Dykstra. 7.35 and less in the ballgame. 28-25 West Catholic. Dykstra leading scorer for West Catholic. Angles works the baseline. Clutching right hand shot. Falls short. Board down to a running Charlotte Miller over the timeline. Miller hands it off for Rodriguez. But before she did so, she was run into and fouled from behind by Alicia Dykstra. That is the third on Dykstra. 7.20 to go, fourth quarter. Dykstra will take a seat. Reese Palega, who was on the bench to start the quarter, will wrap up her very short break. And it will be the Irish back to work. Left side inbound for Miller. And the inbound is kicked out by Palega and will stay right where it was in front of the Irish bench. FGR to throw in with Miller. Got it left corner to... Ver, or, uh, Ava Rodriguez. Ava hands off for Veronica left wing. Defended there by Rebecca Tuttle. Across the floor with 7 10 in the fourth. Hand off back right side for Ava. Rodriguez bounding to the left side. Throws it hard to a leaping Miller. Miller drives. Skip pass. Right block. Fredericks works the back. Hand off short right corner. Edmondson drives. Pass to the free throw line. Poked and stolen by Polega. She's off and running. Polega. Curls off left block, whips up top to Rebecca Tuttle. Drives inside the arc, launches one from the free throw line too strong. And the fight for the basketball will end up in a tie up in the alternating possession. Will go FGR's way with 6.46 in the fourth and a three-point West Catholic lead. Edmondson out and Williams in. Full court. Pressure getting set up by West Catholic. Dykstra will check in for Seeley London right now. Remember, minding those... Three fouls. It's a diamond and one. Havoc, one, two, one, one press. Left to right. Here come the Irish. Far side inbound to Vanessa Rodriguez. Watch there by Asakome. Right side on to Miller in the backcourt. Skip pass. Left side Rodriguez. Blows over the timeline with the right hand dribble. Skips a left block. Williams clutches. Reverse layup. Falls short off the front rim. And the board is down to a running Dykstra up the right side of the floor. Dykstra stops top of the key. Crosses. Backs it out. Resets the offense. Minute and a half gone. Final quarter. 28-25 West Catholic. And the D2 semis. Alicia Dykstra gets a screen from Alexis Asakome. Throws left wing on to Emma Tuttle. Left corner for Rebecca. Asakome. 
Trying to get it to Pelega, who's defended tightly right wing by Rodriguez. Now looks back to the left side, and it'll be Dykstra resetting the offense. Six minutes to go in the ball game. Dykstra, angle drive, floater through two defenders, falls short. Board, Asakome, put back strong. Fight for the rebound. Two a side scrum on the floor. Ripped out of there by Emma Tuttle. Offense reset. Pelega, top of the key three, rattles it down. Reese Pelega knocks down the triple. The lead is six. That's the largest of the game. And a timeout on the floor. It's been a quiet game for Pelega, but that three stretches it to the largest lead we've seen all game long. Coach Vanderendy was the one that quick called that timeout, wanting to settle things down after the made three, maybe try to set up the defense. Thanks to Centennial Securities and Farmers Insurance for presenting game night on Michigan Sports Radio. Make sure you check out the MGN shop as well through michigangamenight.com. It has been a quiet night for Reese Pelega. Five points, all of which coming in the second half, but the future Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne standout with maybe the biggest shot of the ball game to stretch us to our largest lead for either team in the game as West Catholic now leads by six with 544 in the fourth. What an effort first off though by Emma Tuttle to rip away the rebound. And out of the break, West Catholic is going to set up a half-court trap defensively. They all slap the floor, as is customary for Coach Vanderendi's defense to lock in. They'll now settle in to a half-court man-to-man defensively here. So out of the full-court defense into a half-court man. Free throw line, Fredericks turns her back on the defender. Hands off for a curling Miller. Wild left-hand shot over top of Asakome is good. And Miller's tough answer right there. Her first points of the ball game brings it down to 31-27. Both teams playing half-court man-to-man defensively right now. Dykstra to the right wing, defended by an arm spread wide. Vanessa Rodriguez drives the baseline, pass up top, stone away by Ava. Rodriguez runs to the basket, right-hand shot strong. Board tracked in by Asakome, lobs it for Dykstra at a chance to run. Instead, she'll settle it down. 4.59 of the ball game, 31-27 West Catholic. Alicia Dykstra to the right wing, defended by Vanessa Rodriguez. Dykstra. Banging shoulders to the free throw line and an offensive foul. That's the fourth of the game. Some contact. The lowered shoulder draws the call. And Dykstra with four fouls will have to take a seat. She's run the offense for West Catholic tonight. And when Dykstra's been off the floor, they've had some offensive struggles. So now Seeley London will check in her place. Again, back to -to man-to-man defense, and again, West Catholic will slap the floor. Right wing for Fredericks. Lobs left block to Williams. Out of her reach. Pass too hot to handle. Out of bounds along the baseline. West Catholic takes over. 440 in the fourth. 31-27. Turning into a half-court game here after a lot of full-court defense early. Rebecca Tuttle to slow it down to the four-point lead. Throws free throw line to her sister. Here's Emma. Left wing Asakome, works it left corner to Pelega. Jabbing here, working around a screen, trying to get it away from Miller. Now throws to the Michigan State logo up top to Rebecca Tuttle. Drives to the right wing, stops on the pivot. Up top Asakome, the freshman, starts the left-hand dribble. Fakes the handoff to Seely London. Now hands it off the other way to a curling Rebecca Tuttle. Down the left side of the key, cut off the block. Turns the back, right-hand shot, swatted by Fredericks. Got a lot of arm, though. That's a foul on Fredericks. Her third of the ball game, and it will send Rebecca Tuttle to the stripe. If Tuttle can knock them both down here, she can match the high lead point of the ball game. Tuttle with four in the game right now. Low dribbles, bends the knees, right hand free throw. No good. What a game Tuttle's had, along with four points, three rebounds, three assists. Her sister, Emma, has ripped in five rebounds of her own. One more to try to go one of two at the line right here. Right hand free throw, good. Able to hit one of two. Five points now for Rebecca Tuttle. And the lead also stretches to five. 4.05 to go, fourth quarter. Vanessa Rodriguez will slow it down. To the left wing around a screen. Met up here by Seely London, trapped a little. Passes into the paint, driving to the basket. Williams, right hand shot off the window and good. Good find, good finish. Lead back down to one possession with 345. Pelega works the left hand dribble, now crosses back to the right side. Chased down by Charlotte Miller to the wing. Around a screen to the top of the key. Throws it to Asakome. 
Asakome along the left baseline, hits a cutting Tuttle, run into by a trio of defenders, ball on the floor, tie up after it, alternating possession on the jump will stay with West Catholic. 3.27 of the ball game, D2 semifinal, 32-29. Here comes Alicia Dykstra. She's got four fouls. She'll check in for Paige Seeley London here for Coach Vanderendy, who decides that it's time to have her experienced junior back on the floor. Rebecca Tartle throw in from baseline right. Lobs right corner to Pelega. Defended by Miller. Up top. On for Tuttle. Tuttle angles Rebecca to the right wing. Throws up top to her sister Emma. She'll quick whip it onto a curling Pelega top of the key. Step back dribble. Directs traffic. Skips it to Asakome. Here's the freshman staring at the point. Throws right wing to a curling Dykstra. Dykstra to Emma Tuttle. Left corner to Rebecca. Head fake. Drives, angles to the free throw line, drops it for Asakome. 2.57 in the ball game. Lead is three for West Catholic. Emma Tuttle taking some time out off of the clock here. Drops it for Dykstra, harassed defensively. Dykstra for Asakome, top of the key. Poked into by Williams. Asakome drives, drops it on for a curling Tuttle. Left corner, Pelega with space, tries a three. Missed it all wide to the right side, no good. Board down to Ava Rodriguez and company. And West Catholic's lead could be tenuous here. FGR a chance to tie it down 32 to 29. Two and a half to go in the ball game. Right wing Vanessa Rodriguez around a screen. Rodriguez bounds to the left wing. Angle drive, underhand handoff Williams. Corralled, given up top. Triple try, Ava Rodriguez is short. Board in to Polega and she'll reset the offense right to left over the timeline. 2-10 and less to go. West Catholic taking the air out of the basketball. Skip pass along the half court line to Rebecca Tuttle, but a timeout is going to be awarded before that was poked away first. And West Catholic will keep the possession. 2.04 to go in the ball game here at the, West, here at the Breslin Center. West Catholic looking to equal the 2022 final when they took on Detroit Edison in that one. Last couple years, uh, West Catholic, they've not been the champion, but if you want to win the championship, either in the finals or the semis, you had to take them down in order to win that title. It was Edison a couple of years ago, and West Catholic looking for some of the ultimate revenge. They had Abby Kimball, who, of course, now stars for the Spartans on, on this floor as a part of that team in 2022 in the final. And Coach Vanderendy in her 10th season looking to get that state championship locked up here for the Falcons. 2.04 to go in the ball game. Thanks for joining us here tonight on Game Night on Michigan Sports Radio. D2 semifinal, the final tomorrow. West Catholic looking to advance down to take on Edison if they can hang on. We'll see if Father Gabriel Richard's got one last comeback. It's been all the defense you expected and all the defense you could ask for in this one. West Catholic will have it. Right side inbound, Asakome, the 5'10 freshman to throw this one in. Asakome with six points and three rebounds in the ball game. Inbounds in front of the timeline, and the Irish will bring a half-court trap. Back to Asakome, right wing. Turns, throws across left side to Pelega. Spiked out top of the key where it's settled in by Rebecca Tuttle. Left wing for Pelega. 151, here comes the trap. Pelega spins. Pelega gets tripped. A foul called on Fredericks who goes palms up. Did not like the call. That will be the fourth on Veronica Fredericks. 148, fourth quarter. Two fouls now on either team in the quarter. And now a timeout will get whistled by the other bench with 148 to go. So a look at some of the foul trouble. Four fouls for both Alicia Dykstra for the Falcons and for Veronica Fredericks for the Irish. Three fouls for Cora Williams, the other big out there for Coach Kane. And a couple of fouls on Rebecca Tuttle. And a couple of fouls on Reese Polega right now for West Catholic with 1.48 to go in the ballgame. Coach Vanderendy with the Falcons all in the home white jerseys wrapped around her getting the call in. It's the all-traveling blacks wrapped around Coach Kane right now at the respective benches getting things reset right here. The game has slowed down. It's gone half court on both ends. And as the pace has slowed, Father Gabriel Richard has been forced to break out a half court trap trying to force West Catholic to break out of their four corners, clock killing offense. They've killed it inside two minutes to go with a three point lead. 1.48 to go in the ball game. Can West Catholic advance back? 
to the state championship game and hang on. Baseline left, Alicia Dykstra to throw in here against the half-court pressure. Dykstra, two hands on the ball, left corner for Pelega. Defended by Miller. Miller staying one-on-one -on -one with her. Now here comes Fredericks on the trap. Thrown high all the way across right wing to Rebecca Tuttle. Tuttle poked in two by Rodriguez. Regathers the basketball. And a whistle and a grab and a foul is going to get called on Vanessa Rodriguez. That one, the fourth on Rodriguez. Three now on the team. Asakome will throw in. In front of the timeline to Pelega. Trap looking to go back to Dykstra. Evades Dykstra. Runs along the half court line. Stolen by Vanessa Rodriguez. With inside 90 seconds to go. Trailing 32-29. The Irish have the ball. Rodriguez around a Williams screen. Top of the key. Met up defensively by Emma Tuttle. Here is Vanessa Rodriguez. Backs it out with 116. Defended by Tuttle with 113. Rodriguez drives. Floater, hangs on the connector, high, will not fall. Board tracked in by Rodriguez, left corner, triple try. Short for Charlotte Miller, board to the corner, out of bounds, West Catholic ball with 101. A dangerous second chance allowed. Charlotte Miller had a good look at it as well, just a little short as it was an awkward bounce off the connector, allowed that one to get tracked in by Rodriguez. Full court trap here, one Minute and less to go. We're down to 55 seconds. Here's Dykstra. Angles over the timeline. Jump pass. Top of the key to Tuttle. In front of the timeline, Polega. Polega is grabbed and fouled. If the whistle is on Vanessa Rodriguez, which I believe it is, that'll be her second. Rodriguez, 10 points, two rebounds, four assists. Now two fouls on Rodriguez got that corrected, not four earlier. Now, now two fouls on Vanessa Rodriguez. Half court trap on, near side inbound. In front of the timeline to the left side to Pelega. Pelega's trapped with 45, lost the handle, out of bounds. Last off of the reaching Irish. Their fateful don't love the call into the backcourt, neither does Charlotte Miller talking one of the officials. It'll get inbounded here by Asakome. In the backcourt with 43 seconds, up 32 to 29. On to Dykstra, trapped, Asakome. Throws over the timeline, tip but settled down by Rebecca Tuttle. And Tuttle is grabbed from behind and fouled by Rodriguez. And the foul shooting game will begin here. Tuttle one of two at the stripe in the ball game. Rebecca with five points, three rebounds, and three assists. The senior at the stripe. Offsets the right foot in front of the left. Low dribbles with both hands. Spins the ball, right hand push free throw, splash. That one's good for Tuttle, and it stretches to a two-score lead, most importantly for the Falcons. She's got one more coming with 38 seconds, but before she does, a timeout called on the other side by Coach Kane. He will ice the kicker, so to speak. Call a full timeout, 38 seconds to go. 33-29, West Catholic will take a break. Be right back for the Breslin Center. We are Centennial Securities. An independent firm with a team of committed professionals. We strive to exceed our clients' expectations by giving outstanding service. We're proud to be part of our community where we live and work. You can feel confident choosing Farmers, which means a black cat doesn't always spell bad news. What about a gang of them? Actually, a group of cats is called a clowder. Isn't that right, tough guy? We are Farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Welcome back to the Resident Center. One more at the line for Rebecca Tuttle. West Catholic leading 33-29 to with 38 seconds on the clock. Second free throw, rattles out, no. Rebound spiked out of bounds. It'll be ruled to be last off of Emma Tuttle. The, the main poking motion looked like it came from Veronica Fredericks, but at last is ruled to have touched off a tunnel. And here come the Irish. They now trail 33 to 29. 32 seconds to go. Turn to a first to 30 defensive battle, just like we kind of expected in this one. Rodriguez, top of the key, triple try for Ava. Falls short, chase to the ball. Foul over the back on FGR. And it will be West Catholic basketball. 
That one goes on Cora Williams and will be her fourth. And it will send Alicia Dykstra to the stripe here. 22 seconds to go and it looks like Detroit Edison is gonna likely have a rematch of two years ago like they saw against West Catholic. Dykstra to the line looking to get into double digit scoring. Balanced scoring attack for West Catholic. She'll be the first to do so. Quick free throw, too strong. Foul shooting, but a bit of an issue down the stretch for Coach Vander and his team. One more coming up for Dykstra. Where's number two in the home white jerseys? Offsets the right foot in front of the left. Has white sneakers. Bends the knees, no dribble. Right hand free throw off the left side of the rim. No, Dykstra missed them both. Board tracked in by Williams. 19 seconds to go. Here comes Charlotte Miller. Hands off right wing with space. Triple try Rodriguez off the front rim short. Board tracked in by Emma Tuttle from behind. And she is fouled. No, it'll be a jump ball. And the possession will stay with FGR. Jump ball is the call on the tie up. And FGR's got it, 10.9, fourth quarter, 33-29. Baseline right inbound for Charlotte Miller. Iris trail by four, they need to score a couple of times quickly. Now Vanessa Rodriguez to throw in. Rodriguez, right corner to Miller. Drops it, right corner, back on to Rodriguez. Triple try block, but a foul. The whistle will be on Dykstra as well. That's the end of the night for Alicia Dykstra. 7.9 on the clock, Dykstra done for the evening off the foul. It will be three at the line for Vanessa Rodriguez as Seeley London comes in. 7.9 on the clock. Rodriguez leads all scorers with 10 in the ball game. Adds in two rebounds and four assists to go alongside it. First free throw from the righty is good. FGR comes within a single score once again. 11 points now for Vanessa Rodriguez, the 5-5 sophomore. Bends the knees. Second free throw up and good. Splashes that one down. One more at the stripe for Rodriguez. Can cut the lead to one with 7.9 in the ball game. Rodriguez bends. Two dribbles. Right hand free throw. Good. Hit them all at the stripe. She has 13. A quick inbound. A quick foul to Pelega. And Reese Pelega will go to the stripe, but regardless, the outcome at the line with 6.8 seconds to go, the Irish will at minimum have a chance to tie this game. But there certainly have been some West Catholic issues at the stripe, most notably, we just saw Alicia Dykstra miss them both, and Dykstra also now fouled out of the ball game. But here comes Reese Pelega to the stripe. Quiet game for the senior leader, but has the two biggest free throws of the season right here. Right hand free throw, low driving shot off the connector, no good. Another missed free throw. One of their last five at the stripe right here for West Catholic. Second one to make it a two-point game. Pelega bends the knees. Right hand free throw. Rattles out. No. Missed them both. Rebound down to Miller. Right away, Coach Kane calls his final timeout. West Catholic has missed five of six free throws down the stretch. 5.9 seconds on the clock and FGR has got the basketball with a chance to win it inside the final six seconds. Would you believe it? The foul on the three ball not only fouls Dykstra out of the ball game, but all three made it the line by Vanessa Rodriguez and FGR with a chance for one of the most improbable late comebacks you're going to see. Things seemed all but wrapped up. But as it often does in these big moments in the bright lights of the Breslin Center, it comes down to your ability to finish at the stripe. And West Catholic, who normally are, are as sure-handed as it gets at the stripe, really, really struggle. One of two at the line for Tuttle. And then both Dykstra and Pelega, two players you would never expect to miss a couple at the line. They miss them both at the stripe. And West Catholic leads by only one. The lead is 33-32 with 5.9 seconds to go. Father Gabriel Richard will have to inbound from their own baseline. They have no timeouts remaining. The sisters Rodriguez, Ava and Vanessa out there in the backcourt. Up front, Cora Williams, along with Veronica Fredericks, and on the wing, Charlotte Miller right here. West Catholic will defend the half-court line. 5.9 on the clock. Inbounded into Fredericks. Throws over the timeline to Miller. Settles it down. Launches a three at the buzzer for the win. It's good right down the hatch. 
the Irish walk it off. Unbelievable, Charlotte Miller, they dogpile. FGR is moving on to the state championship game. Unbelievable, Charlotte Miller heaves from the right wing, splashes it down. And in the game of the year, in terms of anything we've seen at the Breslin Center, Charlotte Miller and Father Gabriel Richard are on their way to the state championship tomorrow. What a finish! Unbelievable! The emotion taking over the West Catholic side. It'll be a third straight trip to the Breslin Center that will end without a championship for the Falcons. And for Father Gabriel Richard, they stay undefeated in the most improbable fashion. We're going to step aside. We'll be right back here from the Breslin Center. We'll have some highlights. You already know what your farmer's insurance play of the game is. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back from the Breslin Center. Father Gabriel Richard at the buzzer on the way to the state championship. The 10 winners of the Nobel Peace Prize or the last five Miss Americas. The point is the applause dies and the achievements are forgotten. But can you name three friends who helped you through tough times or teachers who encouraged you in school? We remember those who make a difference in our lives. I'm Randy Hansen, president of Centennial Securities. What matters to us are the personal relationships we have with our clients, helping them build a secure financial future. As a Centennial Securities customer, you know what I mean. If you're not, isn't it about time? Member SIPC and FINRA. Hey everyone, Nate from Michigan Game Night. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the MGN shop. You can find it through michigangamenight.com or the Michigan Game Night page on Michigan Sports Radio. Click on the Buy MGN Merch button or tab on either page and find your way on over. You can check out a store that has hats, beanies, sweatshirts, t-shirts, water bottles, and everything in between from just simple MGN logo designs to playoff featured designs, designs with famous calls and moments from MGN, and much, much more. Make sure you check out the MGN shop through michigangamenight.com or michigansportsradio.com slash MGN. Can you identify your number one personal trait? The thing that you do better than most others? If not, this may be a good time to think this through. If you're really good at writing, then why use the phone? If you're great on the phone, why use email? If you have exceptional human relations skills, why sit back and let others lead? I'm Randy Hansen, president of Centennial Securities Company. Playing to our strengths is something we do very well at Centennial. And if you're already a customer, you know what I mean. If not, isn't it about time? Member SIPC and FINRA. Well, welcome back, everyone. Centennial Securities postgame show, final postgame show of our 23-24 uh, season here on game night. And what a way to finish it as well. 35-33, Father Gabriel Richard stays unbeaten on the season as Charlotte Miller at the buzzer knocks it down from the deep right wing for three. And the Irish keep dancing. They have a date tomorrow night with... Uh, Detroit Edison in the state championship game. Some scoring leaders in this one. All scores led by Vanessa Rodriguez. She had 13 points to go along with two rebounds and four assists. It was a balanced scoring attack for West Catholic led by Alicia Dykstra who had nine in the ball game. She fouled out as well uh, down the stretch in uh, in the end of uh, this one. Reese Pelega, a somewhat quiet night offensively. Five points, but she did have seven rebounds to go along with one assist as well for the seniors' final game for uh, West Catholic in this one. Rebecca and Emma Tuttle in their final game also had really, really good performances on both ends of the floor. Six points for Rebecca, five points for uh, for Emma, and both went uh, north of four or five rebounds and a couple of assists added in as well. Without any further ado, let's take a look at some highlights, and then we'll find our way into some replays from this one. Let's start with or some awards, I should say, in this one. Let's start with this. Reese Pelega, big triple. This stretched it to 32 points, stretched it to a five-point lead. 
or a seven point lead, I should say. It seemed like that this thing was just about over, but uh, not quite as uh, Pelega knocked down the three and ultimately after only one uh, free throw made after that, West Catholic would fall. But here's Pelega taking uh, what seemed like at the time was a little bit of an icing bucket for West Catholic. Side scrum on the floor, ripped out of there by Emma Tuttle. Offense reset, Pelega, top of the key three, rattles it down. Reese Pelega knocks down the triple, fully to six. That's the largest of the game, and a timeout on the floor. And then we'll go right into it. This is our Farmers Insurance. Of course, we thank the Bennett Center Agency in Wyoming on 28th Street, our new presenting agency with MGN, but... The Farmers Insurance play of the game, the final play of the game of our 23-24 basketball season. You know exactly what it is. Father Gabriel Richard at the buzzer with Charlotte Miller. Into Fredericks, throws over the timeline to Miller, settles it down, launches a three at the buzzer for the win. It's good right down the hatch. The Irish walk it off. Unbelievable. What a way to finish our basketball season here on MGN. Centennial Securities, the winning game plan. At the end of the day, you have to look at uh, some of the changes made down the stretch. And once the pressure came out for uh, for Coach Kane's team, he was able to uh, be able to, to force a couple of steals, but especially force West Catholic to the free throw line. And ultimately, uh, this one kind of came down a little bit to West Catholic just really, really struggling at the stripe down the stretch. West Catholic missing five of their final six at the line. Father Gabriel Richard, Vanessa Rodriguez went three of three at the stripe. And of course, the triple at the buzzer for Charlotte Miller that winds up being the winning difference. The Rainbow Grill in Granville presents our Player of the Game Award. A couple of ways to go of this. Vanessa Rodriguez had the most points, led the way on both ends of the floor. But Charlotte Miller... Didn't do a ton of scoring compared to uh, some of the rest of her team. Just had five points, and the night was all said and done. But Miller knocking down the buzzer beater three certainly is going to earn our Rainbow Grill player of the game. How about we listen back to it one last time, just for good measure, as Miller knocks down the three to win it at the buzzer. Into Fredericks, throws over the timeline to Miller, settles it down, launches a three at the buzzer for the win. It's good right down the hatch. The Irish walk it off. All right, with that, let's close our basketball season here on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. And I'll try to keep uh, a lot of the thank yous uh, short uh, in this one or as short as possible. First off, to everyone at Michigan Game Night, Michigan Sports Radio. Of course, Chandler Timmer, unfortunately unable to join me tonight. But uh, all of their work throughout the year, and we've got so much cool stuff already cooking for next year. I think our, our product across the board for Granville Bulldogs coverage and for area coverage, maybe a little bit more uh, some Lakeshore focus and game of the week. It's just, there's a lot of interesting things starting to uh, already cook early in the year. And our partners over at Michigan Sports Radio, I think that that game night at Michigan Sports Radio brands me that much better. So thanks to Brock Honkel. Of course, thanks to Brock Honkel uh, for helping supply this extra set of gear. Everyone else at Michigan Sports Radio as well who have uh, rallied a lot of support uh, in uh, in the past week. Some of what uh, I have uh, have uh, been going through uh, with, uh, with me and my family. Of course, uh, if you didn't hear uh, through social media, whatever, of course, losing... Uh, our house, uh, pretty much a complete total loss, uh, fire uh, over the weekend. That's why we couldn't broadcast last Saturday. Uh, it was tough to do a game when I didn't have a car and I didn't have gear. So so thanks to MSR for helping rally a little bit of gear. Uh, we will be back. we got to rebuild some things, obviously, and, and, and come back. But certainly we will be back uh, in full force, I think, with game night going forward. And I can't wait to see uh, how much better it's going to be. Thanks to Farmers Insurance and Tenure Securities, long-time presenting sponsors. Can't thank them enough. Um, you know, and, and looking to add on to those presenting sponsors as well, but especially those two, the, the core tenants that have made everything happen to us throughout uh, throughout all the years here on MGN. Of course, everyone that tunes in, uh, whether you tune in to our podcast back in football season, our Granville uh, Bulldogs broadcast, our playoff coverage. I mean, just blew up numbers across the board. This YouTube page started to blow up some numbers as well. And a lot of times the YouTube numbers you see are probably half or a quarter of what the total viewership numbers are. I mean, we, we've got some great momentum. That's why this thing is going to have to keep going. Uh, going to be a long couple months, but also a good couple months to get a chance to kind of retool 
retool some things and reset some things. So uh, looking forward to that. Again, huge thank you to everyone uh, that uh, that reached out, that supported over uh, over the past week or so with everything I had going on. I, me and my family, we, we cannot uh, uh, give our, our level of appreciation enough to all that. So so thank you to, to everyone. Thanks to Chandler one last time for all his work throughout the year here on game night. And thanks to everyone else at Michigan Sports Radio. I think with that, we can wrap it up. What a way to finish it. A buzzer beater for our final broadcast of the year on game night on Michigan Sports Radio. With that, we'll see everyone very, very shortly. Make sure you tune in uh, across social media at MI Game Night. We'll have a lot of news on what all is coming next, where we're going to do, because we've got some cool things coming up in the meantime. One last time, my name is Nate Dreyer signing off. Thanks for tuning in to game night all year long. We'll see you next time.